recorded. Sorry about that. Technical, a little bit of technical difficulties. As George said, my name is Chris Wigman. I'm a staff engineer at WP Engine, out of uh, based out of Florida. I'm a WordPress core contributor. I'm a speaker. I've taught computer science, blogger. I've had a whole lot of roles in the WordPress community, including one of the first plugin sales to a major company. I sold better WP security. I've taught this stuff for a long time. And I typically, actually, I typically speak on security or privacy, which has been, been an interest since my first day as an airline pilot, which happened to be 9 11. It was a great career sign, let me tell you. But so I've been around the WordPress world, though, for about 10 years now, and uh, mostly teaching on security, privacy, things like that. Today's talk, though, is about where we've been as WordPress and where we're going with WordPress, specifically with things such as Gutenberg, what the future of the software is and where the community is going a little bit with, along with that software. And in order to talk about where we're going, the first step is, of course, where we've been with this software. Where we've been, there's two things, where the community's been and then where the WordPress software itself has been. So let's talk a little bit about where WordPress has been. This is the growth chart of WordPress in percent of roughly the entire internet. It's the percentage of the top 10 million websites on the internet that use WordPress. One interesting thing about this is instead of this line dropping, it's actually growing a little bit faster this last year. So we're up to, as of October 22nd, we're up to 32.1% of the entire internet runs on WordPress. That's a lot of the internet. It's even better, it looks even better when you compare it to the competition. These are the top seven content management systems on the, on the entire internet. So the next closest thing is Joomla. I have a lot of good friends who used to work in Joomla. I'll be honest, I don't know anybody who works in Joomla today. I'm, there are people out there, it's the number two content management system, but the scale of installs is so vast that it's actually harder, much harder to find somebody that works in even the number two compared to something like WordPress. Of course, if WordPress is going that quickly, is there even room to grow further? And yes, there is. The top content management system on the web is still no, no content management system at all. But WordPress is kind of conquering that one. The lines, especially this last year, where the lines really start to converge are telling. So there's an awful lot of potential going on here. But still, 46% of the entire internet doesn't use a content management system, management system at all. These might be flat file generators. If you use something like Jekyll, oftentimes they're going to be counted as no content management system. But some simple HTML sites, there's still an awful lot of that stuff going on. There are single page sites and other things that are happening. And that's a heck of a lot of opportunity for WordPress, especially as we move into things like Gutenberg. As well as WordPress does with the current text editor, trying to create the layouts for a lot of these sites that are still no content management system are, is very difficult today. And that's where a lot of the opportunity relies in Gutenberg. That's where the software has been. And then there's also WordPress, the community. The community I want to emphasize too is not the ecosystem of WordPress. WordPress is still at its core a tool. Even in this talk, I've divided WordPress the tool or WordPress the software from WordPress the community. They're very different things. The ecosystem is the combination of everything we have going on, whereas the, compu the community itself is that the people that are working on everything, all the different aspects of the community, whether it be the Netherlands WordPress community, whether it be the South Florida WordPress meetup group, which happens to be my home uh, meetup, where it can't be you, different products, Gravity Forms, Give WP. Genesis, these are all different communities we've heard of. And as you scroll down the list, if you, anybody here that's on Facebook or Twitter or anything, we see these communities really in a more pronounced fashion on things like Facebook. The Advanced <coughs> WordPress Meetup Group, the WordPress Hosting Meetup Group, the WordPress Security Meetup Group, and all the Slack channels. I, know, I don't know about y'all, how many people in here are on Slack in one fashion or another for work? So little more than half the room. I was up to 24 different Slack teams <laughs> the week before I when I switched to this computer a couple weeks ago. Admittedly, I need to clean some of those out, but most of them are different WordPress communities, from security to privacy to all the different types of areas I've focused my attention on over the last couple of years. And that's where WordPress is going. It's, it's, been, it's been evolving for 15 years now. The 15th anniversary of WordPress as WordPress itself happened this past May. Before WordPress, it was actually another project called B2 Cafe Press that, was, that Matt Mullenweg had forked back in 2003. So this is a long time, long running, 
evolving project that still has a long way to go. And of course, the big thing, the immediate where we're going then becomes WordPress 5.0, which is officially supposed to launch in less than a month. We have the first beta came out, I think it was Wednesday. It's a couple day, it was a couple days late, it was due out the 19th of October, I think it was the 24th that it actually launched. But that first beta is leading up to WordPress 5.0, and especially this Gutenberg editor. Uh, Gutenberg is the tiny MCE editor that you're used to. Gutenberg replaces all of it. It's going to replace the way we work with content. It's going to replace the way we work with pages. We work with menus. We work with widgets. We work with plugins, the way we work with themes. Everything with the WordPress Gutenberg editor is simply different. It's the next evolution of WordPress. Instead of using your widgets, now we're going to have things like blocks for layout, which allows a whole lot of new opportunities for WordPress. Think of it as an app store. Right now you go out and you install an app on your phone, and plugins somewhat fulfilled that role over the years. We can install Gravity Forms, we can install Caldera Forms, whatever it might be. However, with Blocks, we can take this even to the next level. If we need a SaaS product, we're working with Salesforce, we're working with our payment gateway, there could be a block for this. You go out, you can download the block, as a, install it similar to a plugin, and just put the block in your site as a new, almost entirely new style of an app. So it's a very richer ecosystem for much more fine-grained controls. I mean, how many giant plugins do we have now? If we want the feature of a contact form, we wind up with a plugin that gives us a content form, spam control, uh, you name it. Little hover cards when we hover over things. There's you know, maybe 50 features in some of these plugins. One of the benefits of uh, Gutenberg will be the ability to install this feature as a single item get exactly what you need with it, and not have to worry about all the cruft, which includes training, maintenance, and all the other things that go along with some of these giant plugins in the way that we've done WordPress for so long. Another big advantage to this too is content is still portable. There's a lot of good page builders out there that have kind of filled this role for many years now. Beaver Builders, uh, Elementor, Divi, these are great products in and of themselves. But one of their big weaknesses has always been content portability. If you've built, anybody who's built a site in Divi or Avada, if you want to remove that product later on, it becomes very difficult. Gutenberg handles a lot of that. Everything's actually just stored as post content with some markup in it. It's a very different way of looking at content than anybody's tried before with this type of thing. It's so flexible, in fact, that one of the biggest markets right now for uh, Gutenberg blocks is Drupal. The Drupal CMS is one of the biggest markets out there and one of the best going markets for Drupal or Gutenberg blocks right now. That's how portable this technology is becoming. So if that's not saying something, you know, WordPress's mission has always been to democratize the web. We're democratizing the, democratizing the web doesn't necessarily mean WordPress is a core database. It means democratizing the web, period. Gutenberg is a very big step in that direction, just in the fact that uh, Drupal in particular but also I've heard uh, Joomla communities looking at it for various items, and other systems are looking at Gutenberg to incorporate into their own systems. It's kind of like TinyMCE was, which TinyMCE is the current editor way back when it was adopted about 12, 13 years ago. But now with a whole new level of being able to make this data portable, available, and granular, just the way we need, you know, the way your customers need to use it. It is very JavaScript heavy. It's based in React.js, which is a little bit different than what we've been doing before. And also, it's currently, well, as I wrote these slides the other week, it was currently a plugin entirely. You actually had to go out to the plugin store and install Gutenberg. With the release of WordPress 5.0 Beta 1, it is included as the default editor now. And when WordPress 5.0 is released, it will be the default editor for WordPress 5.0. It's feature ready as of uh, version 4.1, which was about a week ago. So as quickly as WordPress 5.0 is coming along, Gutenberg itself was only feature ready about a week ago. So that should tell you something about where the state of bugs and things are if you were to try this, and that is something I have to warn you about. But the thing is feature ready, so if you were gonna try to, if you have clients that you're gonna launch in December, if you have a client you're gonna launch in January and you're working on this site, now's a really good time to get yourself familiar and get your clients familiar because it is ready. Things are not going to change in the way that it's, it's that you're working with it from what we have right now. 
like I say, and it's, the final release is slated for right before Black Friday, the 19th of November. So take that as you will, but that is when it's released. To kind of give you an idea of how big this project already has been, originally they wanted this to be on 100,000 sites and 250,000 posts before they would consider merging it. As of when Matt wrote that a month ago, uh, Matt Mullen is the founder of the WordPress project. He's the CEO of Automatic. He's been around this stuff a long time. But their numbers were 420,000 sites of a, as of a month ago are running Gutenberg. So there is adoption of this thing already. There is a lot of eyes on it. There's a lot of things going on with it. And it is going to improve a lot of things. The improved editing experience really is kind of amazing. I, there's a lot, it's different. If you're very used to typing in Microsoft Word, this is different. This is not going to look like what you're used to working on. But as you, most people who are new to the system, new to WordPress, and just have already started with Gutenberg, have, are not familiar with the old stuff, find it very much more difficult to go back in everything I've seen than people it is for, than it is for people to go forward into the new stuff. It's going to allow, like I said before, it's going to allow easier integrations to other services. When we're dealing with JavaScript, when we're dealing with things that we're not pulling things into the database, and we can go directly out and integrate with other services, it becomes a much easier thing to integrate, like I say, your, your payment gateway maybe, a different type of content form, different types of social media posts, whatever it might be, the integrations available with this are amazing. Also, rapid site building. The difference between pages, posts, other forms of content are gonna virtually disappear. If you can have a block that might indicate, for instance, if you were working for a school and you had a block that indicated each teacher's name that you just put on the content and then arranged in a menu, that's a lot easier than trying to figure out, well, if I go to staff over here and then I put this page over here and put this widget over there, everything's in one place now. The training, think about how you're training your users and you're training your content editors. We're, we're in this room because we're familiar with WordPress. Oftentimes that's not the case of our clients or our customers. So the ability to train people and make sure everything's in one place and make it easier for them to edit the content they need is really going to be kind of a, a, amazing. And that is going to lead to a much easier adoption for new WordPress users. WordPress has been an easy sale for many of us for a long time because of the available integrations, because of things like Gravity Forms, because of the, uh, how mature the market is. The ability to now take this to the next level and make it easier for our users is going to really help us step up that goal. It's, it's now it's not so much about what's easier for us as a tool. It's what's easiest for our users to actually edit things in. And if they're coming from something like Drupal, if they're already using Gutenberg, your job's done for you. It's already sold. They've you worked with the stuff already. So now you can use the tool set you know, WordPress, whatever WordPress add-ons you might use, and integrate that all together with a much easier sale for your customer and a much nicer experience for them. And of course, blocks and Gutenberg editor is actually stage one. The next phases of modernizing WordPress are going to include things like widgets and menus, which I believe is phase two. There's going to be things like themes. There's even been a quote by Matt Mullenweg that phase four of the modernization of WordPress, the Gutenberg project, could be core multilingual. I, in this room, I would imagine that's a much bigger deal than for someone like myself because that's always been a plugin. And how many of those plugins, WPML is a great plugin, Babel's a great plugin, but how many of us have fought with those plugins over the years in, in order to try to keep things going? The ability to have that in core and support it in core, where all your plugins, all your blocks can use core multilingual, assuming that does go in four, that is a quote, you can find him on WP Tavern saying that, but it's not an official item, there's no official roadmap there. But if, if that was to go in core, the ease of use for international users for people that aren't from the United States or not English first countries is, is just amazing. So there's a lot of potential. There's still questions. When I was asked to do this talk and when I was speaking uh, with the organizers about this talk, one of the things was, oh, forget Gutenberg. Yeah, I'm tired of hearing this. I'm tired of hearing the problems. There, there's still issues. The, probably the core issue that we're going to hear the most about, uh, and this room in particular has some very big people involved with this issue are the accessibility issue. Right now, in the United States, if you work for a university, we can't use Gutenberg. I just left the University of Florida last month, so I've only been working with WP Engine for a little while. We had to, they're scrapping their Gutenberg integration right now at the University of Florida. It's not accessible yet. 
we are because the universities are required by law and depending on where your country is, depending on what industry you're in here, if you have accessibility requirements by law, you may not be able to go to Gutenberg on November 19th. That's not to say it's not coming. But people are working on this. Uh, WP Campus has agreed to sponsor an accessibility audit. There, there's a call for proposal out right now to make sure that they are covering all the bases. But this is an issue we have to think about at the moment. It's still buggy. It's not released yet. It's not production software. It's beta software. So if you put this on your client's primary site right now, they're going to find bugs. Notice I didn't have any screenshots of this. There's a reason for that. Every time I tried to make a screenshot on my Linux computer here, some sort of bug, it was just weird graphics glitches. As I was searching for screenshots, I tended to find it was all people screenshotting weird bugs and graphic glitches. It's not quite ready for prime time. However, there are a lot of people using it. There's still a learning curve. The editor learning curve, if you have a user that's been writing in WordPress for the last 10 years as a blogger, there's a learning curve there. It's gonna take them a couple of hours. If you're a developer that's been writing PHP for the last 10 years, there's a learning curve there. That's gonna take you a couple of months, if not weeks. There's a quite the learning curve on the code side of things. This is using something called React.js. WordPress has always typically been PHP, HTML, a little bit of CSS, and JavaScript on top. Now JavaScript is first. So that is going to be a learning curve for your agency or for your shop that's building stuff for it. Integration with existing sites. If you have a site with 50 plugins in there and it's all custom code, it's going to take a while to get that code up to speed. Data portability. If your data is in something like Avada, Divi, not to pick, out, pick on these plugins, they're great products, but if you're already using one of them to try to get the data converted over to some of this, it's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, and project updates tends to be one of the biggest things I hear of a concern right now. Typically, WordPress historically has had a very rigid, we do not put new features in a dot release. Right now we're 4.9.8. That .8 should never be a new feature by its own admission. 4.9.6 was a huge slew of new features for uh, Gutenberg. So if you're working for enterprise, a large company that relies on stable and predictable upgrade cycles, there's a little bit of a question right now. These are all issues that, as great as Gutenberg is, we do have to think about. So I do want to make sure that they're put, put out there. However, all of these issues are being slowly worked through. It's not like the core team doesn't know about them. It's just not quite there yet. But again, the product hasn't released yet either, so it's something to think about. And we see all kinds of things. Uh, this I would agree with because currently Gutenberg sucks. Here's the problem with collective thinking at Automatic. I mean, there's the range of this, if you search for Gutenberg on the web, this was just a tweet search I did the other day. I tried to get this as close to this, uh, as close to today as possible as I updated this, but there's also a lot of positive going on. If you're using ACF, it's fully Gutenberg ready. If you're using, I, I believe Gravity Forms is added or close. Yoast, I believe you guys are Gutenberg ready at this point. More and more of this is coming online. Again, it's still not released, so that everybody's still kind of working out their integrations, but things are coming along quite, quite well. Regardless of what you see of people who have tried it, and you know, if you've tried it, your plugin's not ready for it, people get mad. You see an awful lot of tweeting, you see a lot of social media response on the bad, but not a whole lot on the, on the good side of things. The stuff I see from people I try to introduce this to come, tends to go more like this. I blog for the first time, when I actually try using it, Okay, it takes a little bit. It, there are some bugs and it does take a little getting used to, but the, the writing experience, the user experience is better than what you had before. And that's really the, the pinnacle of this. It will be easier training, it will be an easier experience compared to what you, what the onboarding from what you've had previously when trying to introduce a customer to WordPress. And again, editor is phase one. Just because we're done with the editor, Gutenberg project as a whole, the modernization of WordPress is not complete. The next step will be widgets and menus. So instead of having a separate midget, widget, midget, widget and <laughs> menu editor, need a little more, need a little more coffee this morning. <laughs> instead of having a separate editor for each, these are going to be moved into the block system. So you'll have menu blocks, you'll have widget blocks and things like that. Beyond that, then, we're, then they're talking about theme and plugin APIs being converted to being, to being more useful with uh, 
blocks. There's a lot of things going on as things move forward. So we're in the very early stages of the modernization of WordPress, but it's coming and it's, it's really gonna be an improved experience. So then who is gonna use this stuff? What's the whole point? Why, bo why, why bother doing this? You, you hear this stuff about backwards compatibility. WordPress still supports 5 point, PHP 5.2, which has been dead for close to 10 years now. It still supports other, you know, there's, there's been a whole lot of legacy we don't wanna upgrade. So why the upgrade thing now? And it's because there's so many opportunities right now. WordPress has always been blocks, then small businesses. Now it's becoming bigger and bigger in the enterprise. WordPress was always developers and site admins, you know, the, the freelancer who's building sites for their clients. But now we have designers making careers, content writers making careers, project managers, sales. In other words, every aspect of business is now part of WordPress. Whereas historically, when we talked about somebody, if, if I was to uh, cue this room 10 years ago, 90% of the room would have been a freelancer or somebody that's building their own blog or building a blog for a friend, something along those levels. Now I have, now there's, this room's full of teams that build giant products, full of people that build uh, sites for giant uh, corporations, things like that. The evolution of WordPress is not just a blog, it's still there, but we're moving further and further into the enterprise. And we can see that with just some of the brands that are using WordPress today. I apologize, this is very US centric. That tends to be what happens, especially as it, I blatantly stole this from my boss, Jason Cohen from WP Engine, this particular list. But this was a couple weeks old, just some of the various brands from the BBC, Viacom, Microsoft, National Geographic, all the brands using this and not just as their blogs. This is being used for all kinds of different technologies now. And it's not even used as their main sites. It doesn't need to be. One of the big advantages of WordPress is it's quick to spin up. A site that for, say, Microsoft that would normally cost them two to three million dollars, they might be able to get away with 100 to 200,000 for on WordPress. In the enterprise, this level of scale, this level to quickly iterate and get a site done in six weeks for a tenth of the cost is really where the strength is. It doesn't need to be the primary CMS. And there's a lot of growth there. If you're out there trying to sell people on this has to be your only content management system, that's simply not true anymore. There's a lot of niche for this. 53% of WP Engine's respondents, as they were polled, used two or more CMSs. I can tell you from my own experience, this is the UF Health website that I just left. We used WordPress as our, sec technically it was our secondary content management system even, even there. We had 800 sites, about, and over 30,000 daily users, including an intranet that had over 40,000 users on it. It was just a matter of how many of those log in a day. Our main, this particular, this is actually Drupal, Drupal 7. Obviously it's a neat a little redesign, design's dated, that tends to happen. But the rest of our stuff is almost entirely WordPress for our front-facing sites. We have two giant uh, WordPress multi-site installations covering the, almost the full 800 sites. And then even on top of that, we still have very custom-built things. We have a directory system that integrates with you know, all kinds of academic uh, sources for the sake of, you know, it's built in PHP, Vue.js. So it's, it's one tool in our toolbox. WordPress is not the end of the goal. It's a tool to help us reach the end of our goal, to reach our users. And that's an important thing to remember as we're, as we're trying to sell new people. It doesn't have to be the only thing they're working on. And it's still its greatest weakness, or its greatest strength, whether you're dealing with enterprise, whether you're trying to sell a site for 100,000 that Adobe is trying to charge 2 million for, you wind up with the integrations that become uh, its single greatest strength. Everything's already written. The size of the community, the size of the ecosystem around WordPress means chances are you don't need to reinvent the wheel as you would with a proprietary system. From 2011, back in 2011, there was approximately 150 different marketing SaaS items. And this, this, is, this is the MarTech evolution. MarTech uh, is the blog that puts this out every year. The 2018 version of MarTech is up to over 7,000 different sites that integrate through different marketing services. Nearly every one of those has an integration with WordPress already available. I'll be honest, I don't know how US-centric this is versus how uh, centric this would be for different services in different parts of the world, but the concept is there. If you're trying to integrate your customer with anything they need, WordPress probably already has it for you. That's not changing, that's getting stronger, especially with the ability to build blocks. Different types of uh, services, especially stuff that was displaying content, re content retrieval, is much easier with blocks than it was trying to pull things, store it in the database, build all this custom stuff to support it, 
and then wait for caching or something else to break. This is going to be easier on your hosting. This is going to be easier on pretty much all aspects of WordPress in order to make sure that things are still moving and your customers get exactly what they need. To kind of zoom in on this, this is the 7,000 from 2018. I can't read any of them individually. <laughs> they're, they're just so stuffed in there at this point, but the idea still comes across. There's just so much out there that we can integrate with at this point. So then it begs the question, is building a theme still redundant? If you're still doing this the old way, if you're just building a theme, if you're just building that blog, should we rely on the word, you know, should we move on to new technology? Is, is what we've learned over 10 years still, uh, do, we, do we have to move on to the new stuff? No, we don't have to move on to new things. So don't let this stuff scare you. This is a lot of new. And if you're used to doing things a different way, that's fine. You can still keep going. The web interfaces aren't going anywhere. We're still using HTTP. There's still RSS feeds. You can still build emails. You can still do a uh, classic editor. Now we just have new ways to develop for this. You can interface with WordPress from the API level. API is application programming interface. So instead of what a user is supposed to see, this is what another computer is supposed to be. You can get data out of it from computer to computer instead of just sending it to a person. You can interface from it from the command line, which is on your Mac or your Windows, you go to the terminal, you can start typing things and you can pull up WordPress that way. These are going to be strengths. These are different ways. Instead of just having one or two ways, we're not just building web pages anymore. <coughs> we're building all kinds of integrations meant for con being consumed by all kinds of users, most of which aren't even human at this point. We're cons we can be consumed by another uh, computer, another service. We can make SaaS services, progressive web apps. All these new technologies are available, but not required. What does this mean for WordPress work? So what does this really mean for our jobs? It's just simply new opportunities. If you're a developer, learn an interface. If you're working with the front end, if you're building HTML layouts, templates, great. You might need to add React to it to, make, to get the most power out of it in order to make the sale, but you don't have to learn an entire new skill set. You just add, you're adding some to your existing skill sets. There's other opportunities and themes and beyond. I don't actually write PHP code anymore. I work in WordPress. I'm writing in Golang. Golang is a Google C-based language. <laughs> I see I'm not the only one in the room. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a C-based language developed by Google about 10 years ago that's built for command line tools, built for desktop tools, really. I don't write any PHP in my day job anymore, and I still work in WordPress. It's a new... Uh, opportunity for me, and frankly, after 10 years of writing PHP plugins and that, I was getting a little burned out. It's been nice to be able to switch and still be in WordPress, still be in the community I know, and do other things. Of course, for designers, are probably in the best shape with this. Layouts of all these different integrations and everything, the sky's the limit there. And then non-text. Even if you're doing something, you know, if you're a writer, the ability to make content easier just means it's more content's going to be available. It's going to be easier to get that content in. There's more opportunity to use your skill sets, whether it's in content, project management, or just about anything else. The opportunities are there. You're, we're selling to bigger clients. We're including more people. We're branching out into new areas. The opportunity is there for all of this. It's not just the developer's world anymore. It's not just the site admin's world. That's just one part of it. Everything else is going to go from there. So if you're willing to scratch someone else's itch, in other words, if you have a problem you need to solve, if you see a problem out there, the opportunity, especially right now as things are going, is, is really there. I would say go big or go home with it. Just take up that opportunity, move forward with it. There's, no, there's very little plugins out there right now using building blocks. So if you want to learn blocks, start putting your code out there. Better WP Security was a plugin I built. It's now iTheme Security. I sold it to iThemes, it'll be five years ago next week, I think. It was one of the first big plug-in sales. I was a student at the university just trying to learn code. Don't ever look in the code of that plug-in if, if, if you want. Some of the old stuff is a little odd. But it was one of those, I had a need where I was working to build something, so I, I took it and ran with it with a plug-in, and it's built an entire career, leading to my Golang work today. There's all kinds of this stuff, especially right now, probably right now more so in the last 10 years with, with Gutenberg, with these new integrations, to take, some, to take a new idea and run with it, whether it be accessibility, privacy, uh, development, design, it's all right there right now. 
So then your next step then is just simply get involved with it. I, I give this talk a lot about community, and there is a, like, uh, Shard, I can't pronounce names this morning. Shard was saying there's the uh, community workshop next. This is just kind of a quick overview. I would say that if, if you are interested and you're ready to move forward, you've already taken the next step just by sitting in this room. The fact that you're here means you're trying to learn Gutenberg, you're trying to learn WordPress. So there's the next step. I would suggest today, though, get out and enjoy the hallway track. The hallway track is simply make, you know, if there's a slot where you're not necessarily interested in the topic, take, it, take that opportunity to network here. I live in Florida currently because of WordCamp Miami and the hallway track. I work at WP Engine quite honestly because of the hallway track at various WordCamps. I've gone through, this is my fifth WordPress company. I've never applied for any of the jobs I've had. It's all been networking through, the, through various items or through various conferences. So take that opportunity, especially with ideas in Gutenberg. If you're a designer, maybe it's team up with the developer. This is the type of place where you're going to find that work and the help to move forward with this stuff. And take it beyond the conference, your local meetup. I, I'm assuming I couldn't find a Utrecht WordPress meetup on meetup. That might be because it insists on searching Florida for me. It's out there. These meetups are out there from WordPress to designers to Drupal. Uh, Girls Who Code is a huge meetup right now in the United States. Uh, just you name it, there's React meetups, Golang meetups. These, these are the great spot to take these skills to the next level, to get involved in your local community. Uh, the Austin WordPress meetup is the one that got me involved in WordPress at first. So yeah, some of you, I think he's been to this camp before is why I picked this slide, the guy on the left, Mendel from GoDaddy. <laughs> but uh, he, was, he was one of the guys that kind of helped pull me into the Austin WordPress meetup back in the day. You can even have to go, if, I mean, if, if you're remote, if you're too far from things, just join us on Slack, make.wordpress.org slash chat. You have to have a WordPress.org account, but this is the Slack team. Weekly meetings from dev, from timelines, from accessibility to privacy, all these meetings happen on Slack, wordpress.org Slack, Slack channel. Every week, just about every team has some sort of meeting, so if you want to get involved, that's the place to do it. And do it your way. Find your passion. Don't let somebody tell you that if you don't know React, you can't make it in WordPress. If you don't know Gutenberg, you can't make it in WordPress. If you don't know whatever it might be, the list goes on. Developer is one role in this ecosystem. It's one role. There's all kinds of roles, and there's only becoming more and more every day. The amount of jobs I see every day from support people to project managers to content, especially content writing jobs, I've seen so many more of lately. The opportunities are out there. Don't let somebody tell you you can't do it. Don't let somebody tell you Gutenberg's gonna stop you from doing it. This is not the end of WordPress. This is a new beginning. This is where WordPress is going, and it's gonna be new opportunities without the loss of the old opportunities. So if you're still working in PHP, still a lot of opportunity for it. There's just more things you can learn now. So thank you all for coming out this morning. I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of where WordPress is going, where Gutenberg's going. Okay, my name's Chris Wigman. You can find me as Chris Wigman on, well, pretty much anything from WordPress.org to the WordPress Slack to GitHub. Uh, thank you very much. Is there any questions before I close? I think we have a couple minutes. Either it's too early in the morning or I talk way too fast. Thank you all very much for coming out.